Gwendolyn to make an earnest man out of me. I'll bunger in my way into Cecily's heart. And it's always with a girl that she would like to marry a man named Ernest. I'm the lady of the house and I intend to keep it that way. I'll get what I want no matter what my mom says. The fact that they did not follow us at once into the house as anyone else would shows that they have some shame left. They've been eating muffins. That looks like repentance. <laughs> they haven't seemed to notice us at all. Couldn't you cough? But I don't have a cough. I know you don't have a cough, okay? Just work with me here, please. Come on now. Come on. They're approaching. That's very forward of them. Let us preserve a dignified silence. <laughs> this dignified silence produces an unpleasant effect. A most distasteful one. But we will not be the first to speak. Certainly not. Mr. Worthing! We weren't even supposed to talk first. Bitch can't take her own direction. Mr. Moncrief, kindly answer me this question. Why did you pretend to be my guardian's brother? In order that I might have the opportunity in meeting you. That certainly seems a satisfactory explanation, doesn't it? <laughs> the ladies only want to hear one thing. They gotta please the ears if you want to get in the clear. I'm not an idiot. I just like him. And I'm not getting any younger! Your, Your Christian names are still an insuperable barrier. That, that is, is all. Our Christian, Christian names? Is that, that all? all? But, but we, we are going, going to be christened this afternoon. For my sake, you would do this terrible thing? I am. To please me, you're ready for this fearful ordeal? I am. That girl better be making me a lot of cucumber sandwiches. How absurd to talk of the equality of sexes as far as... Self-sacrifice is concerned, men are infinitely beyond us. They have moments of physical courage of which we women know absolutely nothing. Yeah, like I actually believe that. <laughs> What's going on here? I am engaged to be married to Gwendolyn, Lady Bracknell. You are nothing of the kind, sir. And now on to Algernon. It is, is it in this house that your invalid friend, Mr. Bunbury, resides? Oh, no. Oh, by the way, Bumbery's dead. Oh. 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 May I ask now, Mr. Worthing, who is that young person's hand my nephew Algernon seems to be holding in a peculiarly unnecessary manner? That lady is Miss Cecily Cardo, my ward. How do I feel about Cecily? Well, if I must be frank, she's... Yeah, that's how I feel. I'd rather LG marry a handbag. Miss Cardo is the granddaughter of the late Mr. Thomas Cardo of 149 Belgrave Square, and she has a fortune of about 130,000 pounds in funds. Cecily is just a lovely young lady. She is so eloquent, and I just could not be blessed with a lovelier niece. Well then, I suppose I must give you my consent. Thank you, Aunt Augusta. I beg your pardon for interrupting you, Lady Bracknell, but this engagement is quite out of the question. I am Miss Cardew's guardian, and she cannot marry without my consent until she comes of age. That consent I absolutely decline to give. Oh, really? Yes, really. Really, really? 
really, really, really. Unless the moment you consent to my marriage with Gwendolyn, I will most gladly allow your nephew to form an alliance with my ward. I'm afraid that the news I have to give you will not altogether please you. You are the son of my poor sister, and consequently, Elginon's elder brother. Well, you see, Mr. Worthing, 28 years ago, Miss Prism left Lord Bracknell's house, number 104, Upper Grosvenor Square, in charge of a perambulator that contained a baby of the male sex. She never returned. A few weeks later, though, the elaborate investigations of the Metropolitan Police proved the perambulator was discovered at midnight standing by itself in a remote corner of Bayswater. It contained the manuscript of a three-volume novel, but the baby was not there. It would seem that the bag that you were found in is the same one that Miss Prism left in the cloakroom of one of the larger railway stations in London. And being the eldest son, you were naturally christened after your father. Yes, but what was my father's Christian name? The army lists from the last 40 years are here. Oh, these delightful books should have been my constant study. Oh, M. Generals, Malum, Max Bohm. Magley, what ghastly names they have here. Mark B, Mixby, Mobs, Moncrief, Lieutenant 1840, Captain, Lieutenant, Colonel, Colonel General, 1869, Christian names, Ernest John. I always told you, Gwendolyn, my name was Ernest, didn't I? Well, it is Ernest after all. I mean, it's naturally Ernest. I've now realized for the first time in my life the vital importance of being Ernest. <laughs> <laughs>